And hopefully we'll be making something happen pretty soon or whenever. <laughs> That was Lamar Jackson's response when he was asked how contract talks are going between him and EDC and the Baltimore Ravens. And before we get into that, team keep it clean. I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. I hope your day is going very, very good. Please, if anybody, just take Lamar's advice when he's on the field. If anybody tries to come at you with some unnecessary negativity, give him that. Give, uh, ah, that. Nope, don't want it, don't need it. No, don't try to kill my vibe. Tell them just like that. Don't try to kill my vibe. Because we don't want nobody killing your vibe. Straight up, man. Straight up. But anyway, somebody who wasn't so straight up today was Mr. Lamar Jackson. And it seemed as if he was giving some indirect clues as to what may be happening between him and the Baltimore Ravens. Who knows, though? We don't. Only he does, his mom does, EDC does, and if he does or does not have a new agent, which Lamar Jackson, he ain't disclosed that information. He really didn't. Because I believe it was Jerry that asked the question, oh, so who, who's negotiating your deal, Lamar Jackson? Who do you have as a negotiator? And he said, I'm not focused on that. I'm not worried about that. I... <laughs> I'm just worried about the season, man. Uh, and, and then he was asked if he's representing himself. And you know what his answer was? Maybe. Maybe. And guess who loved that the most? Me. Me. I, I loved it. Because when you talk so much and you tell people your every single move and all of your plans that you got going on, it benefits nobody. It benefits nobody. Because Lamar Jackson, it seems like he is continuing to learn that anything that he says can get twisted and turned and transformed into negativity. Anything, anything that he says, anything that he does, no matter how positive it may be, it can get twisted and turned into negativity. So I loved how he conducted this interview today and I loved how he only gave them a sample size. He ain't give them, he didn't even really give them a sample size. Lamar Jackson wasn't giving up the info, and I was with it all day. Now, Baltimore Ravens, before we continue this, I got to say that you guys really, uh, you, 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 you let me down today. You let me down today because you guys said the presser was starting at 2.15. So guess who was ready at about 2.10? I was. I was like, okay, let me check out this presser. It's going to be Lamar. It's going to be Harbaugh. It's going to be Chuck. It's going to be Hollywood. Let me check these boys out, see what they got to say. And guess who started the presser early, before 2.50? Like, usually y'all start late. And I got zero problem with that because y'all know me. I start everything late. But y'all started early. And that threw me off. But I still love y'all. And I hope that y'all are doing really good. Anyway, Lamar Jackson, um, they asked her how, how, how difficult was it to go out the way that he did. Because the last time that they saw Lamar Jackson on the playing field, uh, he was on his back, knocked out. He ended up getting a concussion. And to my surprise, because I'm thinking like, okay, this is a superstar player. There is absolutely no way. This is a playoff game, so this is big money for NFL. There's absolutely no way that they're going to let Lamar, they're going to take Lamar out this game and leave him out the game. There's no way that they do that. Impossible. Not happening. What happened? Lamar, I remember doing a live stream because some people had commented in the comment section. They were like, oh, Lamar got ruled out for the game. And at first I was like, nah, they, they probably just trolling. But nope. It ended up coming across my screen. Because y'all know I got like a minute and a half delay or play and a half delay. And I was like, oh boy, wow. And he was ruled out the game and that ended his playoffs. Because the Ravens, of course, lost uh, to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, he was asked about that. And he said it was difficult going out how they did against the Buffalo Bills. But he said that they focus on moving forward and not dwelling on the past. And that is something that he always says. And I appreciated it because... Right after he said that, he said, like I always say. And that's true because he always says, I'm not focused on the past, moving on, moving forward. He always talks about that. He's been saying that for years. When somebody would ask him after a loss, Lamar, da 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 we're moving forward. When somebody would ask him about an interception in the play, da 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 no, moving forward. We had to move forward. We had to keep going. We're not focusing on all that that happened already. And you can't be. 
If you're going to take it to another level in whatever it is that you're doing, you don't want to focus on the past. You don't want to focus on what it is that you did not do, or even you don't want to focus on what you did do and you didn't do it as good as you could have done. You need to focus on the bigger, the better in the future. So anyway, he continued. And when he was asked about the contract negotiations, he said, I want to be here forever. I want to be here forever. He said, I love the Ravens. I love the front office. I love the organization. I love everybody in the building. I love the city. I love, love it. I love it. love it. love it. Don't worry, Lamar. We love it, too. We sure love it, too. And his sentiments just, uh, it let it be known. Like, hey, and I mean, we already know. You know, we, we know he ain't going nowhere. We just waiting for that official word. And it could happen any day now. Me, I honestly didn't anticipate it until maybe sometime next year. But the way that it's been seeming, because y'all remember the video that we did about maybe about a month ago where Lamar Jackson, he was on a private jet. And that private jet, uh, when he was on a private jet, the following day, he ended up being in the city of Baltimore after he was on a private jet. And there had been some rumors that Hey, maybe he may be in town to talk contract. And hey, who knows? But it's, it's starting to seem from a lot of stuff that's been going on that that could be coming to fruition sooner rather than later. But we just we got to wait and see. We got to wait and see. Um, he also talked about how he's looking forward to going against other opponents. And we know with Lamar Jackson, he's just ready to play football. He ain't about all the interview stuff and the talking. And I, no, he just want to go play some football, like straight up. Um, and the reason I'm looking down is because y'all know I took notes. Anyway, um, really, good, really good question. He was asked about how do you set the tone for this season? And he said that he has to lead by example. And we know with Lamar Jackson, he's not going to be this vocal leader where he's like rah, 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 rah. And that's fine because not everybody leads the same way. But he's somebody, and we've talked about it on here before, how he already does lead by example. And he's, he said he's going to continue to do that. So we look forward to it. Um, and, and he was just really, just, just focused on moving forward. That was my biggest thing with Lamar Jackson. He was focused on moving forward. He wasn't focused on what's happened. So shout out to him, and we look forward to uh, seeing his growth. Now, a lot of people noticed that. They said Lamar Jackson looks bigger. Not engraving bigger, but bigger. Like this, in the, in the arms and stuff. They say look more swole. They say, hey, maybe it's that Florida diet. I don't know. But uh, Harbaugh, he also spoke to the media as well. Um, he talked about Rashad Bateman, how he has this minor injury. He even said it wasn't even an injury. He said it was more a precaution that they took him off the field. Uh, so he said nothing to worry about, no big deal there. Um, he also talked about how uh, Bradley Bozeman, he is going to be moving back to center. Uh, we'll talk about that in more detail moving forward. Um, now, he talked about how the second year guys, he expects them to make progress. And one of the reasons for that was because of last season. Last season, they didn't have a last offseason. They didn't. They just had to really jump right into it. So guys that, um, especially rookies, that had to be super hard on them. So he's looking forward to those guys making a, uh, a big jump. He also talked about Nick Boyle. How Nick Boyle is strong. He said he was playing with him, trying to play tug of war. John Harbaugh was like, give me the football. Nick Boyle was like, no. John Harbaugh was like, give me the football. Nick Boyle was like, no. John Harbaugh was like, give me the football. Nick Boyle said, no. Leave it. And John Harbaugh said, okay, no problem. But no, he said he tried to knock the ball out of Nick Boyle's hands, and Nick Boyle wasn't letting it move. Um, but he said he's coming along. He didn't give a timetable on his progress. He didn't give an expectation on when he uh, expects Nick Boyle to return. But he said he's been looking good. So, hey. We'll take that. I mean, we got no choice but to. Um, and with, with, with Harbaugh, it really wasn't much. They really didn't ask. Like with Lamar, they didn't really ask him much. With Harbaugh, they didn't really ask him much. And then it was Chuck Clark. Uh, Chuck Clark, I, you could tell from the body language how he looked. He didn't look upset, but he looked like he just, like, I don't even feel like doing an interview. I just want to play football. That's it. I want to play football. He seemed like he really misses the game big time. Um, and you can understand that, especially with the Ravens, how they went out. Like, you know, f as fans, we don't get over stuff uh, for a while. Well, me, with football games, I, I do, um, especially playoffs. I don't know why. Um, it sucks, but, yeah, it, they come and go, and it's like, boom, okay, we lost. All right, I guess that's that. Um, seems like regular season games sometimes, they, they can hurt me longer. But anyway, 
With fans, it takes us longer to get over games than it does players. Players, they get over it like that. They got a 24-hour rule. Sometimes it can be pushed to 48, but they get over stuff much quicker than fans do. And a lot of fans fail to realize that. And I can understand because fans are not football players. Fans are fans. NFL players are NFL players. There's a big difference in a separation. So fans may not understand that the football players understand the business side. And there's, there's an emotional side, too. Because they're invested in this. This is what they do. They play for their team. They're trying to win. They're trying to be the best that they can be. They're also trying to get paid now. And you got to probably put that high up on the list and a lot of other things. But And that's no problem because it is a job. It is a profession. But Chuck, it, it seemed to me, and this is just me, my own conclusion. Uh, it seemed to me that with Chuck Clark, with him finally being around the guys again, being around OTA again, it seemed like he was just ready to get down to business. Did not seem like he wanted to do all this talking. Sound like he just wanted to straight up just play. Let's let's go now. Um, and he was uh, he was asked about Ardarius Washington, and he said that he's been making great breaks on the ball, been making good plays and whatnot. So that's a good sign. And Ardarius Washington is definitely somebody that I could see actually making this roster. Uh, but anyway, uh, they they really didn't have many questions for him either. They did not have many questions for Chuck Clark. Uh, they were pretty much cutthroat, straight to it, and that was a wrap. So I think just as much as Chuck Clark, when he was ready to get to the game of football, I think a lot of the reporters, they were, get, they were ready to get to the game of football too. Um, so shout out to those guys, uh, Lamar, uh, John Harbaugh, and Chuck Clark speaking to the media. And, of course, we know Hollywood did too, but we're going to talk about that later on. Because he had a lot to say and he had some very significant things to say as well. But we'll talk about that later on. So anyway, team, keep it clean again. Do not let anybody kill your vibe at all. Nobody. Because they're going to try to. And it's really up to you. It's up to you more than it is up to them on if you're going to let them. Don't let them. Don't give them the time of day. Don't give them anything. Just keep it moving. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.